today you're going to learn the five best new features in Photoshop CC 2018. Hey guys, my name's Ben Taylor and welcome to PS Tutorials, where we like to show you how to learn Photoshop the easy way. Now today's tutorial is really awesome because it's all about the new features inside of Photoshop CC 2018. So without further ado, let's jump into today's tutorial and get started. The first thing to get into our shortlist here is actually the Select and Mask update in Photoshop CC 2018. And this enables us to take care of notoriously difficult hair in subjects. So this is something great and I'm really happy about. I'm going to click on select and then come down to select a mask. This is going to open up the select a mask window in front of us. At the moment I've got this red overlay on which is not particularly great. So I'm going to change this over to onion skin here. And onion skin comes with a transparency slider. So if you have a, a layer underneath, you can simply bring down the transparency and then you can see the layer on top or alternatively you can bring it up to see the layer underneath. I'm going to leave this at about 50% because I actually want to make a selection of the subject and see the subject when I'm doing it. So I'm going to make the selection with a quick selection tool over here. I'm going to click that make sure it's selected and then I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger and then I'm going to start clicking and dragging around to start making this visible. When I've finished making the selection of the subject, I'm just going to click and drag it up to the hand here. I'm going to go up to the transparency slider and have a look at the selection that I've made on the background. So I can drag the transparency slider all the way up to 100% and this is going to show me the background underneath. So the selection is quite good, but as you can see around the hair, it hasn't particularly done a very good job. So we need to go in further and refine this even more. I'm going to bring my transparency down to 50%. I'm going to go ahead and click the Smart Radius option here and push the radius slider above all the way up to 100%. This is a great place to start for making a change to the selection. You can now see that that's dialed in around the edge and really made an improvement. So the next step, and this is where Photoshop has really improved in the update, is to select my Refine Edge Brush Tool. For me, this is where the new update in Select and Mask is at its best because the new Refine Edge Brush Tool is really, really good at refining the selections. So to show you what I mean, I'm just going to zoom into the image here. And when I've zoomed in, I'm just going to paint around the edge of the hair. I'm going to do the other side. Sometimes this can take a bit to load. And then finally, I think I'm just going to do a little bit at the top again. Now the original selection was very jagged. I'm going to show you something now. If we change the view of this, you're going to be able to see on black and white how much of a difference this has made to the mask edge. So let's just go up to view here at the top and then let's click this down and then click on black and white. Now look at the edge of the selection. You can see the detail in the hair and how it's really brought this out by using the Refine Edge Brush Tool. Let's go back to our onion skin. Click on that there and then just click it off. Now the next thing I like to do is I like to sometimes just bring the edge down here where it says Shift Edge and this just dials the edge in a little bit closer and it just makes it a little bit better when you're refining the edge as well. Now let's push the transparency all the way up to have a look at our subject on the background. You can see that the selection we've created by making the changes in Select and Mask have really done an amazing job. But you can see this light fringe around the edge of the hair here. We need to just click on Decontaminate Colors here and what that will do, it will get rid of that light fringe. And there you go, we have a perfect selection created using the new update to select a mask. When you finish, come down to output two and then just choose new layer with layer mask. And then click OK. If you're interested in learning more about select a mask, I've actually created a tutorial which is showing up here now, which shows you how to create one click selections in select a mask. Check that out if you're interested in doing that. 
Let's move on to number two to make the shortlist. And this is something called variable fonts. So this is really cool, guys. So let's start by typing in some text and then I can show you how these variable fonts really work. So I'm just going to come down and make sure I'm on white here. And then when I'm on white, I'm just going to type in the word amazing. Let's type this in in capital letters, actually. So amazing. And then let's go up to the name of the font at the top here. And all I'm going to do is click and drag over it. And I'm going to type in variable. This is going to bring up a list of variable fonts, which you'll now find in Photoshop 2018. So from this list, you can just go down and choose a font. So I'm just going to choose this one. Uh, choose this one here. What's really great about these variable fonts is that they give you extra control over your text. So on the right hand side, you can see three sliders. These sliders say weight, width and slant. So we move up to the first slider and let's bring this down. You can see how it changes the weight of the font. So at the moment it's really thick here and it's going to bring it down to more of a slimline font like that which is really cool because before you didn't have all this control with the slider to make the differences between the font size. Now let's just change the width and you can see how that brings the width up or down and then let's change the slant. And this is really like an italic, but it gives you more control than an italic would because you've got a slider which you can push up and down more or less than you could in just one setting. I hope you're enjoying the tutorial so far guys. If you are, leave me a comment below and let me know what you've learned so far and how you're going to put it to use yourselves. If not, just pound away on that like button and let me know that you liked the video. Okay, let's move on to number three. We're going to be looking at the curvature pen tool. This is something that's been in Illustrator now for a long, long time, but it's never been introduced into Photoshop. Now, the Curvature Pen Tool is honestly one of the coolest things, and I'm so excited about it being introduced into Photoshop. So let's show you how this works. Let's click here and then come down to the third option, which is the Curvature Pen Tool. With the normal pen tool, you have to click and drag to make a curve. But with the Curvature Pen Tool, you don't have to do that. Let's show you what I mean. So I can just click on a point here, click again, and then if I click a third time, say round about here, it creates a curve like this. And then I can just carry on doing the same, creating curves as I click around. I can also change the shape of this path just by simply clicking on the points. So I can click here and then drag down and up. And the same here. And the same here, which is really simple. Now, if I combine this with a few other tools, so if I click on the here and then the convert path tool here, I can click this and convert it to a point, and then I can go on to the direct selection tool, and I can start really making this into a shape. So I can move around points like this, and then you can see how you can start quickly creating shapes. So if I just drag around a few more points, I'm gonna pull this up like this, and then just drag the corners here. It just makes everything so much easier and I'm so happy they've introduced this tool into Photoshop. Now let's show you something else that this tool is just brilliant for. There's a reason why you've got a picture of a doorway here. Um, let's just click back onto the tool again. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just click on points around this door archway here. Click in the middle at the top click here and click down at the bottom and then just join them together. And at the moment, I want to make a selection or a path of the door, but this is not obviously around the door like this. So all you have to do, you have to double click on your points like this here and then double click again and watch what happens. It fits like this to the area. Now, the top bit here obviously needs a little bit of work. It's not right to the edge of the frame. So to just take care of that, you can click onto your direct selection tool like that. Click on your point and then just pull it to the side to fit it in there. And then on the other side, you could just click in the middle if you wanted to and then just push it up to fit the door. 
And how easy is that? If you did that with the normal pen tool, it would be taking you quite a bit longer. So that's the reason the Curvature Pen Tool is a great addition to Photoshop CC 2018. In at number four is something called smoothing. Now this can be found in your brush tool. Just go ahead to the left hand side and click on the brush tool from the tools here. And when you've selected that, just go up to the top and then you'll see on the far right you've got something called smoothing. Smoothing comes with a lovely little slidey slider which I just happen to love which you can just click down here and then you can just push up or down to increase or decrease the amount of smoothing. I'm going to push it all the way up to 100% to show you what this tool actually does. You've got the cog here which enables you to make different kind of changes to the tool but I think it's really good at its default setting so I'm going to click that off. Okay so you can make some lovely strokes and lines with this tool so I'm just going to start clicking and dragging around and showing you what I mean. Now the really odd thing with this tool is it actually feels like it's dragging, well it is dragging it behind you like this and it's kind of an odd sensation when you first start using it but the more you get used to it by the more you use it you actually start really liking it and I can imagine this tool is going to be really really useful for people that like playing with type and creating different fonts and things like that even graphic designers you know so I encourage people that are graphic designers and people that enjoy using type to give this a go because it's something that I think that you guys will find really really helpful okay let's move on to number five now the last one in our list in at number five is copy and paste layer. It may seem like something that's really shouldn't be in, in the top five, but it's so, so useful. Before you had to shift click and then drag it into another document. And if you had a big document full of layers, it was really laggy and really slow. So if I click on this document here, I've got a layer here selected of a gradient. If I press control and C to copy it, click on my other document here at the top and then press control V to paste it. It's simply going to paste it in now and it's just such an easy thing to do and there's no lag, it just does it straight away. You didn't have this option before in the older versions of Photoshop, which is just crazy. So another great thing you can do with this, and this is even better I think, you can click on this, press control C to copy it again. Go along to your other document up here, click on this, now go to edit, down to paste special, and if I press paste in place, look what happens. It pastes in the exactly same place as it did in the original document, which is even better. And that's why I sneak this into place number five on this list. So I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial guys, I hope you found it helpful and if you're after more content and more stuff to learn then there should be some tutorials from us showing here at PS Tutorials on the left hand side about now. If this is one of your first times visiting us then make sure you, you click the subscribe button below because we're looking for people which are interested in learning all about Photoshop because that's what we're all about here at PS Tutorials. Whatever you do today guys have a great day and then I'll see you all again soon.